Hi everyone, this is Amy and Andy, and we're here today with Megan Allen of Studio 22 Photography. Megan Allen is an awesome photographer. We're super stoked to have her on the show today. Make sure you hit up the comments and let us know where you're watching live. Say hi, and please leave any questions that you have for Megan. Yeah, we're stoked Megan's here talking today about six pieces of gear that are essential for her on a wedding day. How are you, Megan? I'm doing well, and thanks for having me on the show. This is this is exciting. You guys inspire me daily, so it's an honor to be able to hang out with you guys today. Thank you, Thank you so much. Yeah. We really appreciate that. Yeah, um, you're incredible. Yeah, tell us a little bit about uh, yourself, where you're located. Yeah, so um, obviously I'm Megan Allen, and it's Studio 22 Photography is, is what I work under. I'm based in Dayton, Ohio, but I travel worldwide as needed. I love to travel, so that's always a good thing. Um, but yeah, so I just, I'm primarily a wedding and engagement photographer, but I've recently dove into headshots and creative branding portraiture, primarily for creatives. So I've been able to work with a couple Broadway casts and other creatives in that in that field, which has been really, really fun. Um, so yeah, that's kind of what I do. And it's it's been a blast be, being able to learn and create and find gear that makes that easy for me on every shoot. Great. Awesome. Thank, that's awesome. Yeah. That's really cool. And I know you're going to tell us a little bit about uh, some of your projects you have coming up at the end. Um, yeah. You're going to talk to us today about um, your drone. Uh, Magmod, your uh, trusty 35 millimeter lens, um, Auto Pano, which you use to do uh, Brenizers, and your Interfit lighting, and also why you can't be without your phone. Yes. So, and we'll see what that's <laughs> Not all. Not just for about. texting. <laughs> all right. Okay, so we are going to uh, jump in and look at some of these uh, the photographs that you shared with us. Yeah. And uh, first we're gonna talk about your drone. So tell us about uh, you know what drone you use and, and how you got into that. Yeah, so um, I am a self-admitted gear nerd. So if something new comes out, I'll probably pick it up just because I love to tinker. Um, and the drone was honestly that. I love new angles and new looks. Um, and obviously when the drones first came out, nobody was shooting with them. So. Obviously, I had to pick one up. Now it's becoming more popular, but it's still a fun thing. And most couples on their wedding day haven't seen it, even though it's pretty popular within our circles. So um, it's something that the couples really enjoy. Um, so I bring out my drone anytime that I think there's going to be something with good visual impact, because a lot of times the drone doesn't add anything to it and it's just an overhead shot. But when there's an opportunity to build on like the environment, that's when I'll bring it out. Um, this image in particular is in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, um, and this couple was absolutely amazing. They were down for whatever. Um, I flew out a day early and kind of scoped out off the resort that they were staying in, and I found this little area with this fishing dock and thought it would be cool when they were game to head off the resort for during their portraits. So what I had them do, obviously, I just had them lay down, and I flew the drone up overhead, took a couple different angles, but this was the one that really spoke to me. So the nice thing and the nice thing about this particular drone, which is the Mavic Pro, um, I know a couple others have it now too, but I like being able to use my phone um, to be able to see what's going on right on my phone and control it from there instead of having like a big iPad, which I know a lot of other ones sometimes need. Um, I like the portability of the Pro Mavic. It's really, you know, I hadn't invested in a drone prior to that simply because it was going to take too much room and I already have too much crap on the wedding day. Um, so now that it's smaller, it fits in my backpack, I can throw it, you know, and go anywhere with it. That's why I bought it. Also, pro tip for people, because I failed on this, if you are going between places, take the battery out and put in, make sure the gimbal lock isn't on. I had one that I fried and I'm generally terrible with gear anyways, but generally if I'm going to blow something up, I'd like it to be in a blaze of glory. This was not. I had put it back in the in my backpack and walked from one location to the next, and it had accidentally turned on in my backpack, and the motor overheated. So oh, make sure wow. when you're traveling between places, leave the battery out, even if it's a short amount of time, because that was the saddest thing. And the client was like, oh, yeah, let's do a drone shot here. And I'm like, 
yeah, let's not. <laughs> so, <laughs> it was terrible. It was absolutely terrible. So just pro tip from me to everybody else, take the battery out when you're traveling between places. So there you That's go. Awesome. Hey, we had a, we had a question actually, we had posted about you doing this in the uh, SLR lounge photography yeah. for DMs, uh, members group and Christopher uh, Lynn from SLR lounge uh, had a couple questions about when you use a drone. So, uh, one of them you kind of answered um, about scouting out a little ahead of time. Yeah. Um, but he was also curious when you're doing that, um, since there's such limited time that you have with a couple on a wedding day, do you also have uh, another photographer with you, a second photographer who might also be photographing them, um, you know, while you're running the drone or off somewhere else doing, doing other work? Uh, yeah, so me personally, probably 85% of the weddings that I shoot, I shoot alone. Um, I, a lot of times won't shoot with a second shooter and I've never found that it's been a detriment to me. Do I enjoy shooting with a second shooter? Absolutely. Um, but that's also like a personal thing too. Um, I just like having somebody else there to kind of push me creatively. Um, when I pull out the drone, I never pull it out until I feel comfortable that we've gotten all the safe shots that they're going to want. And then anything we add on with the drone is just bonus. Um, so that's kind of how I run with, with the drone situation. And during those times, a lot of times I have them lying on the ground, so it's not easy to take a second shooter and put them in a situation to work that anyway. Um, but yeah, so 80, 85%, 80 to 85% of my weddings, I'm not, I'm not shooting with a second shooter. So, and then any other questions? Uh, he, he, uh, how much, like how, how do you always scout out um, beforehand uh, no. when you're doing that? Or is it you show up and you're like, that's going to look awesome? Yeah. A lot of, like 90% of the time, that's what it is. Um, I actually don't always love scouting prior um, simply because it'll make me think, like I'll have a preconceived notion of what that day is going to look like. And then you'll get there and it starts raining or the opposite, you're scouting and it's raining and then it's a beautiful day. So a lot of times I won't scout or a lot of times I don't have the opportunity to scout if it's out of town. But when I do, obviously I like to. Um, but like this picture, I had never been to, to this location before. This is in Dayton, Ohio. And this was actually a really cool situation because Jake and Leah are two of my favorite human beings on the planet. Um, they're, they're just a wonderful couple and I'm lucky to be able to call them friends. Um, but this is actually Jake's parents land. So it had a special meaning to them because they were getting married on land that had, he grew up on. So we went out and they had, they used to run a haunted house ride that was really popular in the area. And so they have all this acreage. Well, we were walking down along this gravel path and all of these flowers were there. And I looked at them and I was like, hang on, I gotta go back to the car, I have my drone. This is where we're gonna take a picture. So um, really I hadn't necessarily had a plan for the drone that day. But when I saw those wildflowers and the situation of it being his parents' land, there was a lot of opportunity to build a story within that for them. And so that's why we went ahead with this. And I love when it's just a clean, symmetrical look where there's no distractions. And obviously with all those wildflowers, it was just a really nice, nice backdrop for them. Yeah. Awesome. That's great. Awesome. Super yeah. wrong. Cool. Thanks for sharing all that info. That's really great. Um, Shout out to Jason Vinson, Dave Shea, and Dan Dulcher who are watching, and Dan <laughs> said, damn. <laughs> so, Dave, uh, I'm ready for your uh, your open mocking. I'm, uh, I'm ready for you. <laughs> I'm ready for you. All right, so next, uh, another another essential piece of gear, or I guess there might be multiple pieces of gear involved, would be uh, MagMod. So yeah. um, let's jump into those. Yes. I love MagMod, hand, like <laughs> first off. If, if you are a photographer of any sort of where you have speed is of the essence and you want unique lighting, there is no other choice but MagMod. Love MagMod. Um, in this particular picture, this was, in a, I was in Paris and we were looking for a unique Eiffel Tower shot. Obviously it's kind of hard to make a unique Eiffel Tower shot that since it's such an iconic place. Um, but the sky was just stunning that night. And luckily I had my husband with me who, was a reluctant voice activated light stand um, because I, I put myself in weird positions and he doesn't like to claim me when I'm, I'm doing weird things in public. Um, <laughs> but, um, for wow. this particular image, it's a 28 millimeter and I knew I wanted to light them, but I didn't want to lose the silhouette. 
So I had them get into the shadowed part and my husband's standing camera left and it, uh, with a, I want to say that was a Nikon SB910 at that point. I, I have a love-hate relationship with flashes, so I, I run through them quite often. <laughs> um, but yeah, so he had a, a 910, I believe, with a grid and a sphere on it. And then he just held it up super, super high. And I am actually lying on the ground in the dirt, prone, um, and <laughs> aimed up as much as I could with a 28 millimeter all the way at the back of the mall of the um, of the Eiffel Tower. And that's how that shot was made. Nice. Um, the the trick was to get all of the people it looks like they're the only ones there it was not it was a zoo um so that was where magma came in handy because i knew i needed to keep everything dark to keep people's heads from showing up okay. so the magma was huge it took me you know two minutes to do to pull this off when anything else would have taken super long to either build up or pull down after the fact so awesome. i love magma for that right yeah that's it's so awesome how it looks like they're just there yeah. <laughs> them in the Eiffel Tower hanging yeah. out at night. No, we we had a we had a group of people watching me. You know, my my um, my cheek was in the dirt. I got up. I'm like soaked mm -hmm. in dirt. My husband's like, I don't know this woman. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> the only way like, to be, girl. But yeah, so it was it was fun. Mm -hmm. It was a lot of fun. That's awesome. Great. We'll go we'll go to the yeah. next uh the next one you you yeah. sent us uh showcasing your your Meg mod modifiers. I love yes. this photograph. Um, Tell us about how you how you got this one. Yeah. So I had this is in Santa Monica, California, and um so this particular image I had um looked around. I knew a couple locations that I wanted to go ahead of time, but I had never been to the Santa Monica area before to this day. So I knew that the pier was going to be a good opportunity for a couple of different looks and I knew that this um, canoe was underneath it and this was right after I had attended the two-man lighting workshop and so in my head like I was already thinking okay how do you how do you make bold pictures with creative lighting you know you're in that frame of mind since you've just you know been overwhelmed by amazingness from Lanny and Erica um, and so when I saw this I was like oh this this is perfect you know so this is really simple. It's just a single uh, speed light behind them with a mag sphere. I really like the softness that ends that happens with the sphere itself, even if it's not lighting the couple particularly. Um, so in this instance, there is no gel. The um, canoe was red, so it's just the sphere to soften instead of just a really sharp light. Nice. And then I just fired, uh, this is the 58 millimeter, so I was a little ways away and just let them kind of snuggle up and do their thing. So, yeah. Were they holding the the flash or was it? Uh, it was on a light stand. Give me one on second. I forgot to unlock the door for my son. <laughs> oh, no worries. This is a super dope photo. I love the color. It's super vibrant. <laughs> yeah, it's really great. Also, yeah. um, the, the silhouette is, uh, is really well done. It is. Um, I tend to be pretty picky about those. Sorry about that. <laughs> Fine. Yeah. Uh, we were just saying how uh, we love we love the red, how it really pops, but also the, yeah. the silhouette, like how you pose them, is, is really spot on because there's good separation between them. Yeah. Um, it's yeah, on they're, all sides, it's really good. Yeah, and their faces fit together, kind of like mm -hmm. a puzzle piece, and we love that. Like we love when that happens with couples. It just yeah. seems intimate. Yes. Well, and I always tease my couples because I always tell them with silhouettes, I can't, I, I tell them, I say, don't touch, like be the, be the ultimate tease, be close, but don't touch because once you touch, you're just a blob. So I, they did it perfectly. And it's always nice when you have a couple that, that was like the first or second try. They're just naturals at it. So shout out to Nate and Sarah. <laughs> uh, question from uh, Facebook. I'm going to jump to the next one, uh, which is one of your, your, uh, uh, 35 millimeter uh, yeah. photographs. Uh, Dan is wondering how much gear you travel with. <laughs> That's a great question. Um, so for what I, I have actually, as much as it's contrary to what my friends like to mock me about, I'm trying to par down my gear, um, which doesn't, I, I'm still like debating what to buy next. But, um, but yeah, so I, but um, so what I do is when I travel, I'm always going to have my 35, which we're going to talk about. So I always have a 35, um, at least two two lights. I've been using the 8200s because they're just more powerful. I can 
I can have less of them and still have the same output. So I go with 8200s when I um, travel. I'm going to have a long lens. The one pain point for me with the Sony system is they don't have a long prime just yet that's native. So I love the 105, 135, 200 range, but I love primes. So I'm kind of waiting for Sony to bring one of those out. Um, so for now, I'll bring a converter and bring my Nikon 105, 14. Um, and then I'll always have like a mid range something for family formals if I need it. Um, but when I travel, I usually have three lenses, two cameras and enough batteries to, to sustain me. Um, so that's usually th three, three lenses, three to four lenses in a, in two bodies is what I travel with. Great. Good question, Dan. Thanks. Yeah. Um, okay. So let's, uh, jump into your 35 yeah. millimeter photographs. This one's. This this picture is like one of my absolute favorites simply because Sherry is an absolutely phenomenal wedding photographer in Cincinnati. Um and she, you know, obviously asked me to be her wedding photographer, which was a huge honor. Um and they, Matt and her are the most hilarious couple. And obviously as wedding photographers, we never want anything to be status quo if it involves us. So um, this was their first look. <laughs> so we had we had an abandoned high school right down the street from them, which was absolutely amazing for their first look. And then the the climbing ropes in this gymnasium were still intact and moderately safe enough to climb on. Wow. So they said, well, let's just crash into each other, like, you know, doing the Miley Cyrus wrecking ball type thing. So cool. we had an opportunity and I just put the A9 on full burst and just bam, 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 bam. And, Luckily enough, the connection, you know, hit right, right as the frame hit. So that's one of my favorite images ever, just because of who it is and the silliness of a first look. That's you know them running into each other on on an old gymnasium rope. Um, but yeah, I love the 35 because it gives me enough perspective to build a story around the couple. But then it's still it's not it's it's my environmental portrait lens if you if you want to call it something. Okay. Um, it really allows me to tell a story, but it's not super, super wide to where you're going to, you know, get a lot of distortion. So I love that you can frame, you can layer. So I really enjoy that lens as an overall throughout the day lens. Awesome. Um, Dave said, it seems like you, your clients trust you almost infinitely. What do you feel is the most important part of establishing that trust? That's a great question. Uh, yeah. And thank you. I, I hope, I hope they trust me. Um, I, I joke with my couples before they even book that one of the things I tell them is if you don't want a relationship with your vendors, you shouldn't book me because I really want to develop a relationship throughout their wedding planning process because when I get to know them through that process, when I show up on the day, that trust is already built. So that trust is being developed throughout, you know, the six, nine, 12 months that lead up to the wedding. Right. And then on the wedding day, they already know kind of what I'm about. And the other thing I try to do a lot of is do Facebook lives or Instagram live stories. And that way they can see behind the scenes with other couples so that I'm setting the expectation of the level of crazy we may get into. Yeah. So then they're not like, oh crap, what, you know, what, what's getting, what's happening. They've already seen it happen before. So they're, that, that trust is there. Right. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of, that's how I do that trust, that trust building. And, and most of the time it works, sometimes it doesn't. And it's always client comfort levels. I always tell everybody, you you can call, you know, you, you can nix anything throughout the day. I'll, I'm gonna throw out crazy stuff, but then you can, you know, uh, we can scale it back or go further, whatever you want. So. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Great. Um, so another one of your... Um... Yeah, the 35 image. Okay. And and this is this is a pretty tame image um comparatively to sherry and matt but this is this is what i love about the 35 is just you get that expansive feel but it's not overwhelming and um this was actually a, a shot that i did at the vasquez rocks in california about two three weeks ago and it's just i really love the amount of story you can put in a 35 and this picture really speaks to me because michael and natalie have such a great chemistry. So throughout the day, it was just really nice to work with them. And I just love this image in itself. So. Great. It's beautiful. So um, another one of your, uh, one of the things you love is you 
your Brenizers. So here's yes. uh, this yeah. one is just fantastic. And now uh, obviously, like people might say, well, that's not really a piece of gear, but obviously, um, right. you have uh, software that's essential. Um, yes. For you to to actually create these. So yeah. uh, what what software are you using for that? So I fell in love. I. I'm a glutton for punishment and I love to push. So Brenizers are naturally the next level of, you know, trying to make something work. Um, I really respect Ryan Brenizer and I love what he does with these. And so um, I watched his big long tutorial and picked up Autopano Pro, which is the program that he had recommended in his videos to stitch together the panos. And that program has been instrumental to really consistently get all of the panos to look correct. So I would never be without that. And I always try to do a Brenizer in a session if if it makes sense. Um, the, the key thing that I've found with Brenizers is having a neat depth of field to tell the story with is always um, important. So this one in particular is my Nikon D5 and the Nikon 200 F2. Um, so it's a huge lens. My arms hurt by the end of this one. Um, but I was like, all right, we're done. No gym, no gym today. No gym. Um, but this was done in Portland at Eloa Falls and we had shot up by the waterfall. And as we were hiking back out, we took a different route and I saw that you could get down into the riverbed. So I am actually in the water shooting and making this and i want to say it was like 180 images by the end of it which was obscene um but it was it, it's one of my favorite pictures i've ever made um so yeah so i took like i said i think it was about 180 images at the end and then auto pano stitched stitched it together and that was the result so nice so when you're taking your photographs for your brownizers are you taking them um, in a pattern that goes like up and down, are you going side to side and zigzagging back and yeah. forth? Or what's your strategy for when you put <laughs> You shoot and pray. No, <laughs> I, um, I, I always joke because I'm, I'm the queen of hitting every piece of these and then like one key element will be missing in the dead center where I can't put it back and it just makes me crazy. Oh, no. But um, so what I do, so for Sherry and Matt here, they are actually the first two frames. And this was with an 85-1.8 and my Sony A9. And so they're the first two frames. And then I went from the top of them to the right, then came back middle over. And so I went all of the right, then went across the bottom and then went all of it to the left. So I always do right and then left. And I've done it that way simply because then I know I've hit everything. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes I'll do it in a circle, like a circular pattern, but I find that I'm most efficient and I get the best results when I do one whole side and then the next side. That's a great strategy. Cool. Um, so the other, the other piece of, uh, the other piece of gear that you love is your Interfit S1. Yes. Go to this one. Yeah. All so, right. So about this. Yeah. I love my Interfits. Um, the one the one thing about the interfits is I will always have a lighting assistant with me when I'm using them just because they're so big. Um, so I do always make sure I have a lighting assistant with me when I when I bring them out. And for this image, obviously it's high noon. The sun is you know right on top of their heads. Crazy shadows. This is actually a two image composite. So the first one everybody's you know full shadows, and then the second one my lighting assistant came in. Um, was standing in front of the gentleman to the groom's right and then just one one full power with the interfit to overpower the sun and um, super easy and then I just masked out everything you know in Photoshop after the fact but the thing I love about the interfits is they're just so powerful and they're comparative like I would compare them to you know the photo the pro photo line of, of strobes that are on location type things um, but I really love the battery life of them. And I like that my assistant can take it and there's no strings, there's no cords or anything. It's just the head. So it's really nice. That is, that's awesome. And then, yeah, this is a different instance, same wedding, um, but again, the interfits just give such a beautiful light. I love the, like the tones that come out of the interfits. 
And so this was an interfit. My assistant was behind them. And then we just smogged up with some atmosphere aerosol. And that's what you see kind of the, the smoke and haze in the image is. Um, and so, yeah, single light and just let the inner fit do its thing. And then the aerosol actually kind of helped wrap the light a little bit around them more than you would have gotten without, you know, without the smoke. So awesome. Yeah, it is. great. And uh, so we talked about your drone, Magmod, your 35 millimeter auto pano for Brenizers, your inner fit. And your last one, number six, is your phone. My phone. I love my phone. Um, <laughs> so I, I love, and it is so funny because these are some of the ones that so many people that don't, don't recognize what's going on think are some of the hardest pictures to achieve, but they're really so easy. Um, so it's a fun way to impress the client in a quick manner. And that's one of my goals is to get as many looks as possible in the smallest amount of time. Cause especially on a wedding day, you don't have a ton of time. Right. So the phone is one of my favorite tricks to pull out to just get an interesting um, composition that you wouldn't be able to get. Um, so what I did with this one, this is in this is a really popular place in Columbus, and it's just a hallway, and it's got beautiful. It's almost a glass floor, and then all glass railings. So you've already got a ton of reflection going on. But what I do, I should have brought my uh, my camera up. Actually, I have a seventy two hundred. So don't do this with a 70 to 200 because it's not going to work, but use what you've got in front of you type deal going on right now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so what I do is I'll just have the lens and then I'll have the phone right up against the lens and I just kind of play with it until I find the reflection in the lens with the phone and you just double up your image. So it's a super easy, super fast way to make a more interesting uh, composition that you may not have just by itself. So the bottom half of this from, you can kind of see where the phone starts because um, you'll see a lot of like the lines in the floor and then suddenly they're gone. And that's where my phone started. And so then I just in post brought up the reflection, the, um, the exposure of the, of the, um, of the reflection to make sure it all matched. And there you go. But, um, but yeah, it's just a really neat way to kind of make a neat reflection for the couple. So, and same thing here, um, a really neat composition that I thought was pretty cool by itself, but I thought we could do a little bit more if it was doubled up. And um, so here again, we've got, and, and also on the other one and this one, Magmod again, very, Magmod is like ever is life for me. Um, but yeah, so this one, Magmod with a sphere behind them, just had them snuggle up and we, we made sure the rocks were already very, very orange. So it really helped with the composition. And then just waited for them to kind of rock back and forth. I always encourage my couples when we do silhouettes to kind of move just a little bit. Um, so then when the movement looked right, I just kept snapping and the iPhone is the bottom half and, and they're the top half. So. Awesome. Great. Yeah. Very cool composition. Sweet. Thanks, Megan. Awesome <laughs> yeah. photographs. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, tons of awesome info and tips. Um, we are going to jump over and, um, before we head out here, want to remind everybody to get in your photographs for the SLR Lounge Awards. Yeah. So now we're going to go take a look at a photograph and we will. Score I apologize it. to whoever get gets to oh, have my uh live critique <laughs> oh come on. No, come on that's a cool photo that, that is, is a really cool, cool i like that photo i want to shoot there i know right that's that's really awesome yeah. <laughs> that's really that was awesome. uh that was actually one of the apex award-winning uh photographs uh, that's a recent that's entry dope. that's that a really that's cool. a place that i would love to shoot in a lot yes. of opportunity so, you don't uh, even need your iPhone for that. Look at that. I know. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's scroll down here. Um, look at this one here. Yeah. That's what you think, Megan. So we have, uh, so it, I mean, you can see some of the details here. Nikon D750, 24 millimeter. You can see some of their settings. And uh, the first thing we would do is rate it for composition from 1 to 10. What are your thoughts on that? Oh man, 
the this is the full frame, right? Like, there's no mm -hmm. um, extra on top. No. No. So I would want to almost the only thing that I would say is bring it down to show more instead of that big black space. Um, that would be the only composition pick, just because I think if you drop just a little bit. That gentleman beside the guy that's about to shoot the pool ball, his head's not going to be as close to the fringe. Yeah. So that would be the only thing that I noticed compositionally. So I would, I would sit between an eight and a nine on composition for that. All right. Okay. Awesome. Eight and a half. So we'll round yeah. it to a nine. Yeah, we'll we'll be generous. There we go. Yeah, cool. Well, <laughs> how about posing? I dig the posing. Yeah. Um, I like that it's casual. Obviously, it's a it, it's a it's a staged portrait. Like. And a lot of wedding, like, there's not much in wedding photography, you know, that you can do in the, these situations that isn't posed. Um, I like the way that it's casual. They're all, it all makes sense. Mm -hmm. I noticed the pool stick kind of gets across the one guy's cheek, so I would have, like, and that's me being super nitpicky. Yeah. Um, and that I would sit there for my own picture later and be like, dang it. Um, yeah. I like it. I think the posing is good. It's a casual bunch of guys, so I'd, yeah. I'd go... I'd go nine, eight, okay. nine, yeah. Okay. Eight and a half, we'll go to it. Eight and a half, there we go, we're rounding up. <laughs> <laughs> so I dig the lighting. I wouldn't mind if they were, if they popped more, because I feel like they're a little bit underexposed. And I know it's tough with white shirts to not have that happen. Yeah. Um, and the other thing is I would probably take their skin tones down just a little bit. I feel like they're a little bit magenta. Um, I would like to see this image in black and white too, because I think this could be a really dope, almost like a magazine ad if it's black and white. Okay. Um, but I like it. I, I think it's a good, I like that there's not a lot of hot spots coming from the lighting fixture. Cause I, I feel like that's one of my big pain points is like everything will be properly exposed, but the light fixture. Um, so I dig it. I like how I like it all. Um, I'd give it an eight. Okay. Awesome. Solid eight. And then post production, I know you just said you'd uh yeah. skin tones I, in the middle of it and uh black and white. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I would I would watch skin tones and then and then possibly a black and white. I I would give it a seven on post production. Okay. Great. Because it's a so solid, it's up. a solid image. Cool. Yeah. So then the awesome thing is you get your score, so it's an eight point three five, and then when you hit submit, you can see we can see how we came in with uh the other voters so oh, um, average score is 7.6 so we came a little bit higher than that a bit higher. Uh, scroll down and see got a lot of scores so that's really good yeah great photo uh, alex people. yeah thanks go. for uh great job on that one megan let's i think we have time yeah. for one more let's hit up this let's one. do it let's do it oh man i like i i want to know where that is because that's like a castle that's yeah. super cool yeah. super cool um okay composition right off the bat the like and this is one of in, in the things that i nitpick are things that i have issues with like on my own photography so that's why they they stand yeah. out to me um they're not dead center but they're not in the rule of thirds which obviously in photography rules are meant to be broken however i feel like there's a lot of dead space on the right side that if they would have pulled and gotten more of the sunset you're gonna have more of a story off the sunset than you are of the black rock since you didn't keep the the detail in the rock. Um, so that would be my one thing on like the composition side of it. Um, but yeah, otherwise it's a solid, I, I, I enjoy the photo. I would probably give it a seven on composition because I think that there's a story to be told on the left-hand side unless obviously I'm not there. There might have been people there or something, you know, so you never know, but I, I would give it a seven. Okay, cool. Awesome. Posing. Uh, and, and and I'm gonna say this just from me struggling. Silhouettes are hard because you don't have a lot of opportunity. You're not gonna get emotion a lot of times. It's tough to convey emotion in a silhouette. Um, I feel like they're a little bit stagnant. Um, but it's a great silhouette because you can see. You know I mean, you've got you've got all of their detail, which is huge. Um, I'd give it a seven. Okay. Lighting. Mm -hmm. I like it. I w like I said, I would like to have seen more of the sky on the left-hand side, and I think that would have really pulled you more 
to them because I like the juxtaposition between the blue and the yellow. Um, I would say between a seven and an eight, so let's round up to eight. So eight, good. Okay, cool. And then uh, post production. Um, I think there's a lot of potential again with the colors to be pushed a bit more. I like poppy colors. Um, I think there's a lot of detail that could have been saved in the castle and even on the beach, depending on what is going on on there. Because again, I don't know the backstory behind it. Um, It, this is this this is an image that has so much potential if we like just tweak a few things. So I I would give it I would give it a seven. Okay. I feel cool. so ruthless. I don't like this. <laughs> I mean that's why like part of it is not only do you get to like submit not not only do you get to submit and and potentially win an award but you get to yeah. go through and you can see how photographers rated you so. Um, and you know, you can, when you go through the awards, you'll see that there's certain um, award winners who go in there and uh, they've won awards and they go in there. So obviously, yeah. like there might be people you know and, and not know. So that it's it's really helpful, actually. It is. I've I've actually Great judged job. a few of Dave and Chad's, and I know they're watching right now. And then after I judge them, I'm like, oh no, <laughs> that was my friend. <laughs> so um, we came uh, we yeah. came in a little. A little lower than the average but close so it's you know it's like a seven eight uh photo so that's pretty consistent throughout yeah. uh and you can when you scroll through the list you can see there's uh donatas he's won uh, a bunch of awards so and uh he was just about right uh where where we were at 7.2 so great yeah. awesome yeah. no this is fun very cool yeah i think sometimes you know people get nervous about like submitting for awards and scoring and the nice thing about the slr lounge ones is um the community score that average is counted as one of the final scores so the, yeah. when the curators go through if they're on the fence like you know that's an eight maybe it's a nine you know and that you know there's three people and they're like i don't know they'll go and they'll pull that community score in and so if the community really likes it they'll, they'll bump it up a little Push bit it. yeah that's really cool and so uh just a reminder everybody has until april 30 days in April, right? So you have till April 30th to uh, get those in. And um, <laughs> Megan, thank you yeah. so much for joining us. Um, what, what do you have coming up that's exciting for you? Yeah, I, May is a fun month for me. Um, so next week I leave for Iceland and I am gonna be heading there with a really, really good friend who's also one of the cast members of Hamilton and her boyfriend. And we are going to wander Iceland and do all kinds of shoots along the coast which I'm super excited about. And then I'll return from there and I have a few weddings. And then at the end of the month, um, again, we there's a bunch of fun things. Um, I have two cast members from Hamilton coming to Dayton and we're gonna do some shoots for them, both for album art and ind individual branding. And I'm excited because it's gonna be in Dayton. So I get to kind of show off what we can do in my hometown. And then right after that, I'll be going to New York City and shooting a wedding in New York City and then also collaborating with a bunch of Broadway cast members from a bunch of different um, companies out there to kind of reach into the New York City scene and see what I can, you know, shake out up there. So lots of exciting things happening and hopefully you guys will hang out with me on Instagram and, and see See what I'm working. Uh, working people what is that is Instagram where you're on most? Yeah, Instagram is where I'm most active. I'm still yeah. trying to figure out how to make Facebook work for me. Yeah. So I, I'm What's working your Instagram? on Instagram when where can they find you on Instagram? What's your Instagram handle? Yeah, it's at studio twenty two photography. And it the two it's two two studio okay. two two photography. Awesome. And we'll put the link uh we'll put the link down in a comment. Um <laughs> Studio 22, mm -hmm. and then uh, we'll see you guys back here on May 8th with uh, Karsten Scherzer of oh, the Lumina Studios out of LA. I'm That's glad I came awesome. before he did. He's about to tear it up. Yeah, He's for a sure. So, uh, thanks, yeah. yeah, thanks again, Megan. We really appreciate your time and uh, all your awesome information and yeah. amazing. Thank photographs. you guys for having me. It was a true honor. So. Absolutely, you're amazing, Megan. Thanks again. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day. You too. Yeah. We love you, Megan. <laughs>